What's up, it's Joe. We recently had a guy reach out to us in our Telegram group and he said that a lot of his first dates were going really badly because he just couldn't find a way to have interesting conversations and that meant that the dates were boring and basically didn't lead anywhere. Now, um, this guy blamed the woman for being boring, but in reality, as men, it's our job to make our conversations with the women we want interest in and engaging so that these girls actually want to hang out with us. That's just the way of the world. So that's why I wanted to make this video for him and all other guys who struggle to have interesting conversations. I've compiled eight quick and easy tips to make your conversations more engaging, exciting and electric so that people are more excited to hang around you and of course that's going to make your dating life a lot easier as well. So the first tip is to talk about your passions. Now I know in a lot of cultures it's considered rude to talk about yourself a lot and even in the most uh, famous book about social skills of all time which in my opinion is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie in that book it says oh the best way to make someone like you is to shut up and let them talk about themselves but I think in a dating context that's actually really unhelpful because how is someone going to be attracted to you if they have no idea who you are what your passions are, what your opinions are, okay? You're just gonna come across as the same old average guy, okay? And if you're letting a girl do all the talking, then she's just gonna talk about the same stuff that she's probably spoke about with hundreds of other guys before you. Not so helpful, okay? So don't be afraid to just talk about your passions. Let her know what excites you, okay? Even if it's not something that's stereotypically seen as cool, that's fine too, because if you can show enthusiasm and excitement about these things that do excite you in your life, well, passion and enthusiasm is infectious. You're going to be able to draw people in and they're going to learn and <laughs> discover that actually this topic is really interesting, even if they didn't realize that beforehand. Okay, tip number two is to make use of emotions. Okay, this tip is particularly powerful when you're talking with women. Okay, when you're chatting with guys, we kind of just want to know the facts about the story, or what happened, where was it, when. But women, they're more in tune with their emotions. They want to know how people felt. Okay, that that's what excites them. Okay, so when you're telling your stories, make sure to uh, let a woman know, like how the characters in your story, whether it is you or other people around you, how they felt in that moment. That's gonna make your stories a lot more engaging to women in particular. Tip number three is to paint a picture, okay? Your stories will be a lot more engaging if your audience can like picture themselves, they're actually there in the moment, in the story, in, in their head, they can picture it, okay? So to do that, make use of the five senses, uh, when you're telling your stories, what could you see? What could you smell? Could you hear, taste, touch? Okay? Um, could you see the sun setting in the background? Could you, you feel the wind on your bald head? All of these things, again, are going to make your stories way more engaging uh, because the people are going to picture it as if they were actually there. Tip number four is to play with your voice. Okay? If you can just play around with the tone, the volume, the speed of your voice, it's going to be so much easier to make people pay attention for a long time. Maybe you've seen me doing this already, okay? Um, you're taking uh, purposeful pauses, and then you're speeding up a part of the story and telling it louder when it's a really exciting part of the story. Okay, like I said, this is going to make people pay attention and keep their attention for longer, rather than you're just the same monotone voice, and then this is the next tip, and I'm already bored of myself. Not good. Tip number five is to add uh, energy and enthusiasm into your voice. We've already spoke about how passion is infectious and it draws people in, um, but you need to express that, not just in your words, but the, the way that you're speaking, okay? This is particularly important in like a loud bar or a nightclub, when you're competing to hold people's attention with uh, the music, the foam cannons, the famous DJs, all these things. Okay, that's when you really just need to ramp up the energy of your stories. Um, and that's really the only way to hold someone's in attention in an environment like that. 
Now, quick side tangent, a lot of guys tell us that they're unable to speak loud enough in a bar or a nightclub and people can't hear them. That is absolute nonsense, okay? Everyone has the ability to speak loud enough to be heard in a loud nightclub. Uh, if you're struggling with this, it's probably because you're uh, filtering yourself. Um, you, d you don't feel like you have permission to be loud and expressive in an environment like that, okay? So if that's you, you need to do some real work on uh, like self-confidence and, and letting go of your filters. That's a topic that's way too deep to go too much into in this video, but I just wanted to add that in here, okay? Tip number six is to use assumptions instead of questions. You wanna know how to be a really boring conversationalist? It's to ask the same goddamn questions that every single person asks when they're meeting someone new, okay? Oh, what is your name? Oh, where do you come from? How long have you been living in Mexico? Do you have any pets? What is your pet's name? Oh, that's a cute name. Like, oh, you're a writer. Oh, that's so interesting. Like, no, <laughs> this is so boring. This does absolutely nothing to make you stand out as a unique and attractive and cool person. You're just asking the same thing that she's heard a hundred million times before, okay? So a really quick tweak to be able to get to know someone without slipping into interview mode like this is to just turn your questions into assumptions, okay? So um, rather than uh, where you live in Mexico your whole life, you, uh, you seem like the sort of girl who used to live in the United States but now she just moved here for some extra fun, okay? Now that's just something right off the top of my head, but here's the thing. We are all curious about what other people think of us, our perception to the outside world. So if you change any question into an assumption, oh, you seem like the sort of girl who's gonna be partying at Mandala nightclub every single weekend with her silly little friends, okay? Whatever it is, that's immediately gonna spark her curiosity and she's gonna be like, oh, why did he make that assumption about me? Okay, she's probably gonna ask you that. She's gonna correct you if you're wrong. She's gonna be like, oh yeah, how did you know? Okay, now she's engaged in the conversation. Okay. Tip number seven, this is a really unique one. I've only really heard it from um, the, the, the book that I, I read it in. Um, so shout out to Marcus Oki, an old school uh, confidence coach from the UK. Uh, he wrote this in one of his books. He said, uh, whenever a conversation uh, is stuck in the present moment, it's moments away from dying a horrible death. So what he means is if you can move your conversation into the past or the future, it can live on endlessly, all right? So I'm gonna give you an example here. Let's say you're in an art gallery and some woman says to you, oh, that's a nice painting. If you're gonna keep that conversation in the present, you'd be like, yeah, it is. And then there's nowhere to really, to really go from there, is there, okay? So how do we keep the conversation going on endlessly forever and ever and ever, as long as you want it to? potentially, while well, you can move it into the past or into the future. So into the past, let's see, you could say, oh yeah, I wonder what the artist was thinking when he made this painting. And you, the thing is, you can go further and further and further and further into the past. Oh yeah, I bet he was like feeling really depressed maybe because his wife left him. Maybe his wife was uh, cheating on him. He seems like the kind of artist who was like uh, making a lot of paintings out of romantic pain. Okay, maybe he always had pain ever since he was a child, maybe he was an incel artist, okay? Into the future, uh, yeah, but I reckon they're gonna have to sell this painting soon because uh, the art gallery isn't making as much money as it used to. Oh, they'll probably sell it for around $200,000 and then they'll use that money to invest in other paintings. What kind of other paintings? Well, it seems like incel artists, uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, and then maybe the, the arts, you know, the future of art is NFTs, the blockchain, whatever. All right, so I hope you get the gist of that exercise. Uh, the reason you can talk endlessly is because um, the past is pretty much endless, the future also endless, whereas the present moment, you're kind of just stuck there and then. Okay, um, so your final tip is to open your ears and listen. Uh, so many guys, they get stuck in their head thinking of, Oh, what am I going to say next? What is the right thing to say? So much that they don't even listen to what the girl in front of them is talking about. Well, I invite you to get out of your head and listen to that girl because she's going to give you 
conversational branches which you can swing off. And Kieran and I, we actually have an exercise which we recommend to guys who struggle with running out of things to say. It's called the Word Association Game. Uh, you can play this with a friend or on your own. Essentially, um, you just uh, come up with a sentence and then the other person takes a word from that sentence and creates a sentence of his own with that. So I could say, hey, what's up? My favorite book is The Jungle Book. And then he says, oh, jungle. I went to the jungle in Peru and there were lots of snakes. Oh, snakes. Uh, I hate snakes because they betray people. <laughs> Oh, betrayal. Oh, my dad betrayed me once. Uh, he cheated in a poker game and he owes me thousands of dollars. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, yeah, you can do that with your friend or you can, as I just did, do it on your own by reacting to your own sentences. That's a good game for you to play uh, if you struggle with running out of things to say. And it will also help you to become more free-flowing and to just not put filters on whatever it is that you want to say. And I would encourage you to do that no matter who you're talking to for the reasons we've already discussed. Anyway, that's your video, that's your eight tips. If you enjoyed this video, you will absolutely love Game Academy. That is our video course where Kieran and I metaphorically take you by the hand and show you everything you need to know to get good at game in a step-by-step -step logical basis. And one thing I wanted to say is that you can create a Game Academy account for free right now. Okay, most of the content in Game Academy you can access for free. You just need to visit the homepage and create an account. That's gameglobal.net forward slash academy. Then if you wanted to dive deeper into our spicier content, that's our day game audio footage, our pool stories and our unlimited group coaching, then you can go ahead and upgrade to a VIP account if that's what you wanted to do. Anyway, go do that right now, gameglobal.net forward slash academy. You're going to love it. My name's Joe. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like, leave a comment, tell me how much you like my video, and I'll speak to you real soon.